What's up guys, Lifting here. This is a Crit Inquisitor Ice Nova build guide. In this video, I will show off some gameplay, talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the build and share tips on how to get it rolling as fast as possible. For the actual details of the build, make sure to check the forum build guide link below in the description. So first, let's talk about the five different layers of defense this build uses to keep you alive. And after that, we'll talk about how the build delivers its damage. First of all, the final build has around 185% increased maximum life via the skill tree. This should, with good gear and high enough levels, amount to about 5200 to 5800 life late game. On top of that, the build utilizes the Mind Over Matter Keystone together with Eldritch Bandery to use Energy Shield as both a way of fueling the cost of our skills, but also as a source of damage mitigation. This leaves this build with a potentially pretty high effective health pool. Besides this, you will also be running a Blasphemy in Feeble setup, which basically reduces the monster's damage output significantly by lowering the damage, accuracy, crit chains and crit multiplier. Enfeeble is very powerful and with Blasphemy you won't have to worry about casting it yourself. For additional mitigation we're also using Whirling Blades linked with Fortify, which makes it so that every time you hit a monster with Whirling Blades you will proc this buff making you take 20% reduced damage from hits. And as you can see from the gameplay we use that skill constantly, so Fortify uptime shouldn't be an issue in general. And to prevent heavy physical burst damage and to effectively reach an energy shield, we are also utilizing cast when damage taken, immortal call, increased duration and stone golem. So whenever you take large chunks of damage, immortal call will proc and protect you for a very brief but potentially life saving period. And about the stone golem, it is very important for this build as well as it allows us in combination with the zealot's oath keystone to turn the life regeneration into energy shield. This makes it easier for us to sustain the cost of our skills and makes us safer as we will have more energy shield for mind over matter to work with. The build further does, as you can see, a very good job of freezing its enemies, thus greatly reducing their threat and making you much safer. And freezing is a very powerful mechanic in this game and should not be underestimated. That said, you won't be able to freeze bosses effectively, but against most other stuff, you should be good once your crit chains gets high enough. So as you can see we have some pretty good defense going on here for our build and just for reference this is a tier 13 red map with some fairly nasty damage mods on it and except for the boss it wasn't too much of a problem. Now let's talk about the damage of the build and how we scale it. To demonstrate that I have entered another tier 13 map that besides extra projectiles and onslaught also had in feeble and so that monsters have 80% cold resistance. Which of course serves to slow down our character's damage significantly, but I think it went pretty well considering that this character is only level 80 in a tier 13 map. The damage of the build in its current state is around 25 to 30,000 DPS for Ice Nova and around 45k for Flame Surge. Both skills can get higher damage, but it honestly isn't needed, and by going higher, you are making it much more dangerous for yourself when encountering Reflect Packs. And let's quickly talk about Reflect for a second here. The truth is that you can kill yourself to Reflect with this build. That said, if you make sure to take the necessary precautions such as popping your Sapphire Flask or Taste of Hate as I'm using in this case, and you make sure your cold resistance is capped, then it shouldn't be an issue as long as you stay below 30k DPS for your Ice Nova. I do not recommend using Flame Surge against Reflect Mobs though. It can potentially one-shot you, it probably won't, but in any case it will take a big chunk of your life if you do that with that amount of damage. Furthermore, I do not recommend running elemental reflect maps. You will kill yourself if you do that. So basically, if you take your precautions, you have nothing to fear. If not, then welcome to standard. And another thing you might want to consider here is that the 30k DPS that I'm currently running with here is achieved via a 5 link. And it's up to you if you get a 6 link, if you either want to add a gem that grains more damage or do as I would and add life leech. Not only will life leech make reflect safer, but it will also be a great quality of life improvement for the build as it otherwise has no forms of regen due to sell its oath. But I'll let you decide on that yourself. And I should probably mention that to further boost our damage and generate power charges, I have also included Assassin's Mark into the Enfeeble and Blasphemy setup. This together with Herald of Ice, which also adds a lot of damage via the shattering effect by the way, results in us reserving 95% of our total mana pool. 
which is great since we don't need mana to cast our spells, but instead energy shield, as I mentioned earlier. So we're still making effective use of our mana pool. For this build, you'll also be picking up the Inquisitor Ascendancy class. Not only does it provide large amounts of extra crit chains and multiplier, it also together with the inevitable judgment notable makes it so that critical strikes ignores enemy elemental resistances. Which not only increases the damage significantly and makes it easier to freeze monsters, it also allows you to substitute your cold penetration support gem in exchange for another support gem. And since we're using Whirling Blades, which is an attack skill to move around, the Instruments of Virtue notable further provides us with both 30% spell damage, 20% increased attack speed, which is good for Whirling Blades of course, and then of course 30% increased cast speed, which is great for, well, our spells. For the final two notes, I suggest picking up Augury of Penitence for extra damage and mitigation. The Inquisitor is basically perfect for this type of build. It's so powerful. Alright, so now that you have the build mechanics introduced, let's talk about some of the challenges or problems you may encounter while playing this build. My biggest issue or challenge I had with this build was to defeat Isaro in cruel and merciless difficulty. It eventually happened, but it wasn't painless. I'd recommend that you, as a rule of thumb, Wait at least until level 43 on normal, 70 on cruel, and 80 plus on merciless before attempting to kill him, unless you have a body who can carry you through or feel very confident in your own skills. That said, the faster you can get your 4th ascendancy point, the better as this significantly increases your damage and allows you to spec out of that cold pen gem. And another thing I would highly recommend against is running curse immune maps, as this will significantly reduce your defense and damage output by nullifying your benefits from Enfeeble and Assassin's Mark. So realistically, the only map restrictions you have is LA Reflect and curse immune maps. Any other map affix is good to go, which to be fair, is pretty sweet. The last thing you need to be aware of is that in order to play this build optimally, you need good flask management. I recommend two seething divine life flasks, one of staunching and the other one of grounding, then one surgeon's basalt flask of warding, a sapphire flask or a taste of hate if you can afford it to help mitigate reflect damage, and then finally a surgeon's silver flask of whatever suffix you prefer to increase your movement, attack and cast speed, which works really well together with your whirling blades movement skill. It should be said though that you can use an iron skin granite flask until you start to have issues with reflect. That is when you really want to get that taste of hate or sapphire flask and substitute it. So as you can see there are a lot of different flasks that you need to manage and use. It isn't too bad once you get used to it, but it can be a challenge in the beginning, especially if you're new to the game. In regards to leveling, this build is pretty straightforward. Around level 12 when completing the quest A Siren's Cadence in Act 1, Nessa will offer you Ice Nova as a quest reward. Until then I recommend using Freezing Pulse and I'd recommend that you craft yourself two plus one scepters or wands to dual wield. In one of the weapons you should put freezing pulse, added lightning damage and faster casting. In the other ice nova but with the same support gems until you can get control destruction later in act 2. Once that become available you should use that instead of added lightning in both setups. This will carry you all the way until act 4 where you can start to use spell echo instead of faster casting until you get yourself a Geoffrey's crest at level 53 in which you need to add Cold penetration until you obtain your fourth ascendancy point. Once that is obtained, you no longer need cold penetration and you can substitute that with faster casting or whichever of the other support gems you prefer. As for the skill tree, I will post some progression trees so you can see in which order you are supposed to pick up your skill notes in the forum post. That said, I feel like I should briefly mention that it is very important that you do not pick up Eldritch Battery and sell it so until you have at least 150 energy shield and your stone golem up and running. Until then, you will simply have to sustain the mana cost of your skills via a mana flask. And besides that, I would wait by picking up mind over matter until you have at least somewhere around 500 energy shield as bigger hits otherwise may drain your energy shield too fast. This is something you'll have to experiment a bit with, but anyway, make sure to check the progression trees in the forum guide. Hearing this character is somewhat easy, you just need to focus on getting as much life and energy shield as possible on all of your equipment. And then of course enough elemental resistances to cap yourself on Merciless. Getting a bit of cast speed and increased global critical strength change is not bad either. If you can afford it, I'd also highly recommend buying yourself a carcass jack, chest piece and a divinarius dagger for the life resistances and increased area of effect that they both provide. 
And I'll link uh, all of the gear my character is currently wearing in the forum post. So if you're confused, simply take a look at that and that should make it a little easier. And that's it guys, I hope this serves to get you started with the build. Check the forum guide for details, subscribe for more Path of Exile, and make sure to check out my IRL second YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and bros, do you even know? So, as I mentioned before, the first one was hard, the second one was hard.